Because of my love for vintage lenses and my quest to find a cheap alternative to the legendary digital Bolex, a few years ago, I a few years ago, I discovered Backbone, a Canadian company that offers mods for GoPros and other action cameras to allow you to use interchangeable lenses rather than the built-in one. First of all, this isn't going to be a review of the GoPro because nothing about this mod changes the internals. A GoPro is a GoPro and there are thousands of reviews on them already out there. I'm looking at the usability of the modification and whether this is actually a cheap alternative to something like Kodak's new 5,500 US dollar Super 8 camera. The tiny GoPro sensor is a 1 and 2 3rd inch sensor, which is pretty similar to the film size of a vintage Super 8 camera. The mod allows you to screw in CS and C mount lenses from Super 8 cameras or adapt it to other lenses. I bought a modified Hero 7 because it was pretty cheap and you can pop out the IR cut filter and put in infrared photography cold mirror filters. The GoPro models after the 7 have their IR filter integrated against the sensor and can't be easily removed. I thought it would be cool to have the option to do infrared photography. More on that later. The amount of shooting options in a GoPro allow for a lot of creative control, such as shooting in 4x3 mode so your footage will more closely match Super 8. You can shoot raw photos, film in 4K and slow motion modes, enable ProTune, turn down sharpness, and control shutter speed and white balance. Throw some Super 8 film grain on there and there you go. Digital Super 8. Or is it? I have an old Yashinon cinema lens, a 38mm D-mount lens I picked up at a flea market for $20. With a D to C mount ring adapter, I'm able to use it with the GoPro for a super small camera and vintage lens package that fits in my pocket. But here's where the crop factor comes into play. Remember when I said it's similar to a Super 8 camera? Remember? I said it a minute or so ago. The tiny GoPro sensor is a 1 and 2 3rd inch sensor, which is pretty similar to the film size of a vintage Super 8 camera. The tiny sensor has a 56 times crop factor compared to a full frame camera that you might be used to, like a Canon 5D or 35mm film camera. That means the 38mm lens on the GoPro has a field of view that's practically the full frame equivalent of a 212mm lens. So, great if I want to be locked down on a tripod filming birds, or if I'm on a stakeout and need evidence of illegal activity. Not great if I want to walk around home movie camera like a Super 8 camera. If I use my vintage C-mount Ingenue 12 to 120, I can shoot much wider and zoom much closer, but the size is no longer really a pocket camera. So I need a super wide C-mount lens that ideally can zoom, is small, fast, and hopefully really cheap. And for $50, I found the perfect kit lens. The Eric Hunt Vision 3.3 to 12mm f1.6. It's a CS mount security camera lens and it's IR corrected. Since I'm using a 12 megapixel sensor, I want to make sure the lens can resolve that image properly. Security cameras have historically been very low resolution in order to save on storage space. So make sure you choose a lens that can handle the more modern sensor. If you have sausage fingers like I do, it can be hard to zoom and pull focus with the tiny knobs, but you do get used to it. You can even lock them into position by screwing them tighter so you don't accidentally mess up your aperture or zoom when adjusting focus. But the lens doesn't have any front filter threads and you'd ideally be able to mount an ND filter to not have to leave the GoPro on auto shutter mode. To match Super 8 footage, you want a lower frame rate and shutter speed, not the maximum a GoPro can do but you can always tape on a filter or 3D print a filter holder. When zoomed out to its widest, this lens is even the same field of view as the original GoPro lens, so it works with the internal GoPro image stabilization. So I finally have a digital Super 8 camera that fits in my pocket. I can even wirelessly control it from the GoPro app on my phone. If you want, you can buy a microphone adapter for better audio too. And as I mentioned earlier, it has the unique option of being an infrared camera by taking a couple minutes to pop out the IR filter and put in a cold mirror filter like this 7200 nanometer one. The chlorophyll in vegetation reflects most infrared light, turning them white, and skies look super dramatic too. By changing the image to black and white and increasing the contrast, it gives me the option to capture some truly unique images. I can also adapt my other lenses to it if I don't want to use the small C-mount lenses and I want a telephoto image. It's perfect, right? Well, for a small camera there are some big problems. 
First off, if you have difficulty pulling focus on a 3-inch screen on the back of your camera, try checking your focus on a 2-inch screen without the ability to preview a zoomed-in image. Monitoring via HDMI turns off the GoPro screen, but you need that screen for the touch controls. Monitoring wirelessly through the GoPro app on your phone is an option, but with the lag time it makes pulling focus very difficult, especially if your subject is moving. But if you add a loop that fits on the back and magnifies the screen for your eyes with a pistol grip, you'd functionally have a 4K digital Super 8 camera that works the way they were commonly used in the 60s and 70s. It just won't fit in your pocket anymore, but it would fit in your backpack. So, do I think it's worth it? Honestly, if you want an infrared camera, I'd go for something different, like an IR modified EOS M, so that you can actually shoot raw video that can be properly graded, rather than the Hero 7's internal 8-bit footage that falls apart pretty easily if pushed too much. But if you don't care about shooting infrared and you specifically want or need a digital Super 8 camera for some reason, then yes, this is probably the easiest way to go in terms of usability. The small size and easy menu system makes for a good travel camera if you specifically want to use vintage Super 8 lenses or cheap security camera lenses. If those don't matter to you and you just want a travel or home movie camera, you might just be better off getting a small camera like a used Sony Cybershot WX350 for way cheaper with the same sensor size and a built-in 20 times optical zoom and then just adding the old school Super 8 film look in post. Or, even better, buy an actual working Super 8 camera off eBay for $50 and get the most authentic experience possible. That said, if I were buying a modded GoPro, I'd definitely get the modified Hero 11 or Hero 12 because of their 10-bit 5.7K footage, which is a massive improvement over the older GoPros. They also have slightly larger sensors, which means less of a crop factor on lenses, and the newer versions also have access to a ton of extra features through GoPro Labs, such as adjusting the gamma curve and lowering or turning off the in-camera denoising and sharpness, which gives you the footage in its least processed form to do whatever you want with in post, or to have an easier time matching to other cameras. Let me know in the comments if you think this is cool, or something you'd never bother with. The main appeal for me was just how small this camera is, and how easy it is to carry around. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe because I do have more weird, unnecessary camera stuff coming out. In the meantime, I might shoot some more with this Ericont Vision lens. Ericont Vision. AV. Audio Visual. Alex Fiedinghoff. It's a lens. Alex Fiedinghoff. So how, how did you think it go? <laughs>